Hi, this is Beth Beard from MyLittleCrapBlog.com and today I'm going to show you how I made this little box. Um, I saw this on Pinterest on Stampin' Up! site and there weren't any directions for it and I just thought it was darling so I thought I would try and recreate it. Mine is just a little bit different than the one that was on Pinterest but I just think it's darling and I also think this one's a little bit bigger and I made it bigger um, not only to store regular sized cards but also uh, any cards or envelopes like these envelopes are five and a quarter by five and a quarter so sometimes I like to make the bigger cards and those fit in there very nicely as well so mine's a little bit bigger I think than the box that was on Pinterest so anyway let's get started uh, the first thing you're going to need is the afternoon daydream simply stamp afternoon daydream simply scrap and kit and it's a beautiful set. Uh, the colors in it are Pool Party, Basic Gray, Primrose Petals, and more mustard. And it comes with cardstock and beautiful sheets of paper, and then three big sheets of, of die cuts. So what we're going to use first is the 12 by 12 sheet of Basic Gray cardstock. And we're going to cut this down to 10 by 12. So we'll just cut two inches off the end. And then we're going to rotate it and on the 12 inch side, so this is 12 inches now up here, we're going to score this at 5 inches, my cutting blade, at 5 inches and 7 inches. And then we're going to turn it back to the 10 inch, now the 10 inch side's up here at the top, and we're going to score it at 2 inches. And 8 inches. And now we'll fold on the score lines. And now we're going to make a cut on this score line and this score line. And the same on the other side. And what we're also going to do on this middle flap, we're just going to take off a small section of that. We're just going to cut that down just a bit at an angle. So we put our box together. It'll go together very nicely. And do the same on the other side. Okay. So now we'll put on some sticky strip. So we don't want our box to come apart. Okay, so now we got our sticky strip on. We're going to put a piece along each of these edges, the open flaps, fold the side flaps in, and put one here, here, and here, and do the same for the other side. So now we're going to flip it over. This is going to be the front of our box, so this will flip over first. And I've cut two pieces of designer series paper. The first one measures 10 inches by 4 inches, and that's going to go up here. And the next piece measures 6 inches by 4 inches, and that's going to go down at the bottom. But in the picture, uh, the designer series paper didn't go all the way to the bottom of the box. So I measured, I wasn't sure how far up they went, but I went up a quarter of an inch. So we're going to measure from this score line up a quarter of an inch and make a mark. So 
I'll just lay my ruler on there and make a couple quarter inch marks so I know how far down to go. And this is going to be the top or the front of our box. This is going to be the back of our box. So we're going to do the same thing on this side using this score line. So we'll just measure up a quarter of an inch and make a mark. Okay. So now we'll put some adhesive on the back of our paper. Okay, so we'll line this up. And I'm finding where we made our little pencil mark there at the quarter inch mark. And lining it up with the other edge down on this side. And the same down over, I don't know if you can see that, on the bottom side. There's my pencil mark so I know where my paper should lie. And I'm just going over it just a bit just to cover it up. And now we'll do the same for this side. So here's my pencil mark, and here we're only going up to the first score line. So I'll line that up, and hold that down, and then find my other pencil mark down here at the bottom. So if you can see that, so this is actually where it's going to fold in. So the paper only goes right there to the edge, and then a quarter inch from this fold line. I'm just very carefully going back over those score lines and folding that down so it holds the designer series paper. All right, now we'll remove all the red backing. Okay, so now I've removed all the sticky strip. We have our designer series paper attached. This is going to be the front, this is the back of our box, so the back we're going to assemble first. So we'll just pull this little tab up. And attach it and then here you want to make sure that you get the top edge lined up correctly and we'll do the same for the other side flap goes in first attach it to the back and then line up the top edge. And there's our box. So the next thing I have, um, the box on Pinterest, it looks like they had used um, some smaller basic gray stitched ribbon and I'm using some brand new ribbon that's coming out in the spring catalog. It's two-tone, it's basic gray, and if you look at it in a certain way it looks black or it looks gray, and it's about an inch and a quarter wide. It's beautiful. I love this ribbon and it ties so nicely and it's so soft. So anyway, so I have a 16 inch piece here and I put a piece of sticky strip on each end. So we'll pull off the red backing. And now in the picture, it looks like they had had their bow somewhere up here in the upper right hand corner, so that's where we'll start. Um, and we'll kind of put it over pretty close. To... Now I'm not going all the way up to the top, I'm just covering up a portion of the uh, where the seam is, where the paper is, paper starts, and coming down about a quarter of an inch, and I'll start it there. And then I'm just going to wrap it around. I'm going to pull it kind of snugly, but not real tight where it, it bunches up. But just kind of pull it tight and line up those edges. And let me trim that off. OK, 
Okay, and the next thing I've done, I went ahead and tied a bow uh, with the ribbon. Instead of having you watch me fiddle with it, I went ahead and did it. And we'll attach it with a glue dot. Use a couple mini glue dots. And we're going to place this where the seam is to hide it. Like that. Now we're ready for our die cuts. Okay, so I got my die cut sheet here, and the first one that we're going to use, we'll pull off this big one right here. Now it's very sticky on the back side, and the way it looked on the picture, now you could definitely just attach it the way it is, but what I'm going to do is take my embossing buddy and flip it over, and I'm going to remove some of that adhesive. So now it's not so sticky. Now would be the time to write on it before you place it on the box if you've determined what you want your box to be. But I'm just going to leave it blank today, so we're just going to go ahead and attach it. So I'm going to put a couple stampin' dimensionals on the back. And since our bow is fairly large, this isn't going to be able to be in the center, so we're just going to make it a little off-center. Down. And the next thing, take another die cut sheet, this time one with flowers on it, and we'll use this great big green flower here, or pool party flower I should say, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to flip it over, take my embossing buddy, and remove some of that adhesive off the back. And then I'm just going to very gently just curl up the petals. Take our die cut sheet back again and we'll use the primrose petal circle there. Again, remove some of that adhesive and I'm going to put a stampin' dimensional in the center and place that there. Because that's the way it looked in the picture. Now I've got some vintage faceted buttons. We'll just take a small one. And some white baker's twine. I'm just going to feed that through. And cut that. I'm just going to tie a simple knot. Or you could tie a bow here too if you wanted. I just think a knot's faster and easier. We'll trim those edges and then we'll attach this with the glue dot. And we'll place that right in the center. We'll flip this over, put a stampin' dimensional on the back, and then we'll place our flower down here on the bottom, in the corner. We'll push that down. Take our die cut sheet, we'll add a couple more flowers. Um, let's see, we'll do another one in primrose petals, and one in more mustard. We're going to do the same thing. We'll take some of the adhesive off the back. You could also, just by using your fingers, take the adhesive off too. And then we'll curl up those edges. We'll do that for each one. Place that stamp and dimensional in the center of each of these. And back to our die cut sheet. Uh, we'll just use a couple of these smaller circles for in the center. And 
we'll put these on with a couple Stampin' Dimensionals. Let's see, we'll put one down here, maybe another up there. Okay, now we'll add a couple butterflies. The butterfly, I'm just going to take it and fold it in half. And then I'm going to fold the wings back just to give it a little dimension. And I'm only folding them about halfway back. And we'll attach that up here at the top. And it also looked like they had used a paper clip up here at the top um, on the picture. Stampin' Up! doesn't have these anymore. These are retired, but it used to come in an assortment of clips. Clips assortment is what it was called. So I still had a couple of those. You could definitely use just a regular paper clip. And then we'll use another uh, small vintage faceted button. And I'll attach it with a glue dot. And they just had just stuck this in up at the top. And I put it the little button on top of it. Okay, now for the inside. Out of the cardstock that you receive in your kit, uh, you get two sheets of each of these colors. So I cut them down and just did one of each. And uh, the basic gray, they all measure five and three quarters by five inch. So I've got basic gray, more mustard, primrose petals, and pool party. And going back to our die cut sheet again, you see along this edge where it's a half scallop circle. So we're just going to take these and attach them to our cards. So the first one I'll use is the pool party. And again, I'm going to attach the bottom portion of it. So I'm going to take off some of the adhesive up, up at the top so it doesn't stick to anything. What's nice about these, and you can definitely write on them and label them. And the next one is Okay, now we have our dividers made, and we'll put those in the box. And now would be the time that you could put in um, your cards and envelopes, um, the 3x5 index cards and make it into a recipe box, or just make it into a note box. And as you can see, it's fairly wide, so there's plenty of room to add just about anything in it. So, there you go. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.